Hey everyone, this is DJ. And this is Ish. And this is Season 7 of Better Let Me Tell You. We are, but yeah. but we're gonna have some espresso later. You know, I, I've told you I don't care for that song. Oh, I like it. I think it's cute. It's fun. I, it's, it's frothy. Uh, no, no pun intended. It's. I mean, no hate to Sabrina Carpenter and to people who like that song because there's a lot of people who like that song. I mean, great. The song, the song sucks. The song is cute. It's generic pop cute, which is perfect for summer. I don't want to think in the summer. No, no. I just want to stay cool for the summer. Oh, don't tell your mother. Oh, wow. That's Demi. That's a whole other story. You know, anyway, her and her seasonal lesbianism. Well, everybody, welcome to episode 311 of Pero Let Me Tell You. How is everybody? Everybody's doing good. Although some, you know, I think some parents are very happy that this Pero Friday they can finally listen to the show again by themselves in the car without having to worry about the kids. Yeah, but the, this is uh, the Pero Friday of the first week of school. And oh, that's chaos. Chaos. Okay. So... Parents, you deserve a break. Um, actually, back for school this year hasn't been as hectic for me for oh, that's us. Good. Um, so, but I mean, the, the year is only we've begun. only just begun. Exactly. All right, Karen. <laughs> yeah. So who knows what the year brings? But no, no, no. I mean, I, I just uh, Tristan School has this option now that, like, instead of taking you know buying all the stuff for the teacher wish list and all the supplies you could just pay a flat fee and boom oh that's and nice. oh yeah 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 we've uh, you, opted for the, you flat, opted fee. For the flat fee yeah oh, absolutely mm-hmm. except you used to walk in with crates <laughs> there's people who walk in with wagons oh yeah you know those wagons yeah, yeah, yeah. you know that with supplies oh, yeah, but the bad part is that now because our you know our friends who are teachers are not gonna be able to give us extra um wipes for ping pong boil oh <laughs> well you know <laughs> There's always got to be a downside. Always got to be a downside. You know what was not a downside, though? I have to give a big thanks uh, to Andrew Otaso for, for yes. stepping in for me last week. Thank you so much, man. Like, I really, really, Andrew's really appreciate awesome. it. It was a great conversation, especially when you started talking about, like, World War II pollution. Beef day. Uh, you know <laughs> what? Knew? I recorded his interview, um, and I wanted to put that little piece of the video up because... I didn't, you know, that's something we've always talked about when you live here in Miami. You know, maybe I'll put that video up somehow because I feel that's something people need to know, yeah. right? That, you know, when if you were raised here in Miami in the 80s and 90s, if you I used just to go thought to it was beach, me too, if you used to go to the beach, you would get um, like tar in your feet. Like this was a thing. It was a thing. That was, was, a thing. That was just part of the beach going experience. I always yeah. thought that the reason why we didn't have that anymore were because of stricter regulations. Same. But according to Andrew, who's quite the environmental historian, <laughs> it was actually, well, as you guys heard last week in the show, um, it was actually because there were some oil tankers that were like sunken in like World War II That's and the crazy. and the remnants of the oil was like 40, 50 years later still out there. And it's like, what? Oh, yeah. So does that mean in the 70s and the 60s, if you went into Miami Beach, you had even more tar on your feet? Probably. Because by the time we went in the late 80s, 90s, it was like 40-something, 50 years old. True. So, and then you have Pintiga de Chababote. So in the 60s and 70s, Salia and 50s, Jumbao. yeah, you came out, you know, filled with tar. <laughs> you came out looking like Rachel Dolezal. Oh. You know what? You know what commercial freaks me out a little bit. What? That's out now. I just thought about it. That kayak commercial with the lady who's a scarecrow. Oh, I love that commercial. It's a little freaky. Oh, it's very Jeepers Creepers. Where does that song come from? Like the twenties. But what does that song mean? Oh, I don't think it means anything. I think that's just, it was the twenties. People didn't mean things by songs back then. Jeepers Creepers. <laughs> That's freaking, it sucks. <laughs> I like it because it's just a silly little song that was played a lot on like Looney Tunes. <laughs> anyway, so. Hey, you don't like anything today. So we are, I don't want to say if, well, the, the end of the summer is Labor Day, which is coming Officially, up. Officially, yes, yes. Which is coming up. Not that that really means anything in Miami in terms of weather. Sure. Actually, in weather, in terms of weather in, in Miami and in South Florida, ahora es cuando la cosa se pone buena. Oye, la tormenta de hoy. 
La tormenta de, de hoy y la tormenta de la semana pasada. No, 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 no pero oye, it came out of nowhere. Yeah. But it re did it really? Mean, yeah, I know. It's just, it's just, that's just how it is down here. No, and that's how it got here. Now is when the hurricanes come. And no, ahora se pone buena la cosa. Todo, like todo el mundo, you know, a category one is coming. Vamos para Home Depot a comprar plywood. And there still won't be a run on toilet paper like during COVID. Oh, I've already said it that... My house has shutters, but it's those shutters that you... It's like those things you have to put on, like those metal things you have to put on. Yeah. I already said, I'm not putting that shit on unless it's like a Category 5 that's coming straight to Miami. <laughs> then it's like, okay, The day I'll, before. I'll right, put yeah. them on. Yeah. But other than that, I'm not putting them on for a Category 3. No. No. A Category 3, the tumba la mata. Right. I mean, a projectile could fly. But... The tumba la mata. If you have like a gazebo or a pergola. Oh, pergola. oh your yeah, pergola. Yeah, I have a pergola. Okay, I'll dismantle the pergola. But the hurricane shutters, especially on the second I floor. Oh, Don't dismantle no. that pergola. It took us a long time to build that yeah, thing. I know. Tie it down. Yeah, I'll, I'll do certain measures. Maybe yeah, I'll put it on yeah. the side. To something. <laughs> no, I'm not because I'm not coming back to dismantle it and then put it back together again. You know what? I mean, okay, listen. I Okay, let's admit something. Okay, let's admit something. Uh oh Confession Isn't there corner. a part of you that sort of always wants hurricanes to come? Like a small hurricane, not a big one. Like a bad tropical storm. Okay, yeah. yeah, up, yeah, yeah. Up, and up until very a few years ago, there was a part of me, I mean, listeners, you maybe some of you can relate. There was always a part of me that's like, okay, can we get like a category two so we don't have to go to work? <laughs> right, just something just bad enough. Right, the whole thing yeah. was like, you know, we don't have to go to work. It all está cerrado. Right. At least a week. Yeah, because even when, mm -hmm. when you know, I've been self-employed and I had my office and all that, I mean, you still have to, like, answer to clients and if you have a court right. date or whatever. So even if you're self-employed, you still have to sort of work if everything else is on, yeah, right? that's true. Um, but it was always enough to, like, okay, can we get, like, a category two-ish so, like, we don't have to go to work? Oh, and nowadays, enough for, like, the cell phones not to work. Because if you right. don't have that, then you can't communicate. Right. Slack. Yeah. Do not no slack, slack me. No I'm in a hurricane. The slack is going to be slacking. Yeah. And, um, but now that I'm a homeowner, I'm like, hurricane, stay away. <laughs> Nothing that's going to increase my home that my is... home insurance rate. Yeah, because la cosa está negra as it is. Yeah, no, la cosa está feísima. I mean, my insurance is going to like quadruple and then, you know, I'm going to have to do like five more jobs to pay for my insurance. And you know? if you're lucky. Yeah, yeah, because my house is not paid off. It still has a mortgage, so I have to have oh, insurance yeah. on that thing. So, yeah, yeah it's that cosa se pone Because now it's like, you know, you would have the hurricane parties and, you know, everybody over in the house. But ahora it's like... Uh, you have to think about it. Yeah. Although yeah. on the plus side, you have the fryer in your garage. Yeah. <laughs> you'll, be yeah. Able, you'll still be able to cook, at least and, fry things. And then, you know, have uh, a 10-year-old without Wi-Fi or... Or any electronics, well, you I know. I mean, it is what it is, man. Yeah, that's just going to be... And there's no air conditioner, you know. Maybe he'll take a hopscotch. What's a hopscotch? Hopscotch. Oh, hopscotch. <laughs> no, because then you're going to sweat more and there's no AC. That's fine. Then you take a cold shower. Oh, really? Were you hopscotching during Hurricane Andrew? I hopscotch. All no, oh, I wasn't, no, I wasn't because I was in Costa Rica. Oh, that's right. <laughs> what would you know? You didn't even live through the biggest hurricane in South Florida, so please... <laughs> Please, both forward. <laughs> we, were, we were without electricity in my house, in my parents' house, for 27 days. 27 wow. days sit without electricity. You know, and it was like 5,000 degrees outside. You know, you go know, hopscotch in the corner. You know what I just thought about? Mm. If we do get hit with a hurricane, that will be the only reason that we don't put out an episode. I mean, listen, I think... Well, no, because we have listeners all over the country and the world, for that right. matter. I think they would understand. They'd be okay. Yeah. <laughs> but I'm saying, look at look at the commitment we're making. It takes a force of nature for us not to I put think, an episode. I think out. they would understand. They they would be okay with that. So, yeah. So anyway, so summer is ending. Yes, and the Olympics are now over. I know you're a little sad, but but fear not. In four years, it's just a five hour plane ride. Uh, yes. Oh, oh, I'm going to the Alley Olympics. I'm going to sign up to be a volunteer. I don't care. I'll, I'll volunteer. I'll clean windows. I am going to the Alley Olympics one way or another. I See, mean, I already told Jose, I was like, you know, we should go because I feel like we know enough people that we can couch surf. Yeah. Right? Like, you know, go to, go to one or two events and then just, you know, couch surf. Yeah. I've always stayed at my cousin's house in LA. That's why. Oh, oh my God. I had totally forgotten about the kitchen. Oh. 
hello, my cousin's beautiful house I that know. you stayed with. I know. Me. Do you know that when I think of that, I think of it like this, this like fever dream of yeah, hotel. So, so uh, <laughs> last year when Pero Let Me Tell You went west yes. um, and we were in California, we stayed at my cousin's house so and my beautiful. cousin has a beautiful, beautiful house in LA and the kitchen is just, <sighs> it looks like something out of a, of a magazine. It's and, been in a magazine. Yeah, well, actually, yeah, it has. <laughs> that house um, has been in a magazine. Yeah. And it has a really nice pool with very, very cold water. Um <laughs> And um, so that's where we're going to be staying in okay, LA 28. Okay, done. Change yeah. approved. Yeah. Yeah. No, 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 no. Done. He doesn't know it yet, but that's where we're Okay, that's staying. fine. We've already... Just, <laughs> just don't sell the house, Alex. Just... That's all we ask. <laughs> this is my plea to you. I mean, just think. I'm an Olympic historian and collector. This is like my mecca. That's true. <laughs> I'm just going to have so much merch. I'm going to have to like bring back... I'm going to have to <sighs> rent a U-Haul. Uh, at the very least, you're going to have to take an empty suitcase. Oh, for sure. Yeah. For sure. Yeah, at least. I mean, I got a lot of Olympic memorabilia now, and I have to like either get it from our friend of our, the, our yep. friend that you know goes to wherever the Olympics are at because he's in broadcasting, or I have to pay a lot of money in shipping and handling. And you know that's when the Olympics is in you know the other side of the world. So imagine when it's in LA and I'm there. It's in your backyard. I'm just gonna go to the merch store and be like, I will have everything. <laughs> well, then just ask them if they can ship it. Even the lanyards. <laughs> Some people are so into land yards. They really are. And I'm like, it's a land yard. Like, you know, that's one of those freebies that they always give you at like cons and shows yeah. and things. And it's like, what am I going to do with this? Yeah. Um, I work remote. Yeah. <laughs> My aunt would always bring me back land yards from wherever she went, and like wherever. And I'm like, really? Like, I don't want this land yard. <laughs> but listen, I won't, I won't, I won't, I, uh, I will get me my Olympics lanyard. Oh, well, that's, but that's different. An official, Olymp- you know. Yes, especially if you say, if you get to be a volunteer. Yes. Actually, I one like of the reasons is required. I would want to be a volunteer so I could keep the uniform, which you do. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. Oh. It's all about the uniform, baby. I, <laughs> <laughs> I know, I didn't realize you kept okay. it. Okay. Can you imagine how obnoxious I would be <laughs> if I kept that uniform? You know, everybody that comes into my house, I'm like, I'm going to show you my Olympics uniform. <laughs> I don't know if they make shadow boxes that big. <laughs> Can you imagine if I had an Olympic medal? I mean, like, the postman will come to me and be like, do you want to see my Olympic medal? I have an Olympic medal. <laughs> you would take it to job interviews. Yeah. Like, just... <laughs> It's like, does anybody? I'll put it in my resume. Exactly. I have an Olympic medal. Somehow we would be at some type of scavenger hunt thing where like people have to look through their purse and you'd find a way to work it in. Oh, you know that yeah. if, when I am a volunteer in LA 28, you know I'm gonna I'll probably like frame the uniform. That's what I'm saying, a shadow box. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like and then you're gonna put the way some people like frame like kimonos over the <laughs> dining room table, you're gonna have your, my volunteer, your volunteer uniform. uniform. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, you we're joking, but I already see it. Oh, no, for sure. I don't even know what the uniform looks like, but I'm for seeing sure. it. I'm seeing the like, box. For sure. Yeah, yeah, for, for sure. sure. Do you know that I've actually, and I do want to do it, I want to write to the LA organizing committee and tell them they should hire me as a consultant. I'm serious. What's the worst I can say? No. Yeah, I'm serious. Do because it. Because I feel that in order to have a... a <gasps> you know who might be able to connect you is actually your cousin. Well, I, the reason I say this is because you know that um, I think one of the reasons that an opening ceremony is... Um, well received is because you have to have i call it thinking outside of the box while keeping the box nearby okay okay because i think that for an olympics opening ceremony that's what was really criticized of the opening ceremonies in paris Mm -hmm. is that they there wasn't they didn't think outside the box they demolished the box they they forgot the box there was no box they were like a mind stuck in a box but there is no box (laughs) and it's more french than that exactly vive la france but I think that for an Olympic, I mean, the Olympics are based on heritage and tradition. Right. So you can't, like, ignore that. You have to pay homage, right? You have yeah. to. There's a certain pattern. But at the same time, you want to think outside the box. You want to do something different. You want to do something innovative. You want something that everybody will be talking about the next day. But at the same time, it's a balance, right, of, yeah. like, tradition, but keeping it modern and keeping it. So, yeah, they should hire me as a consultant, totally. I think they I'm should. a historian. So, anyway. Yeah, because I would pay more than a volunteer. So I wanted to bring up the Olympics, but for a different reason. Okay. Um, so as we all know, the Olympics ended last week, yes. and when Tom I, Cruise decided to take the flag, yeah, yes. I actually thought that was great. And you know, I, I like, it, it hurts Cruise. me to see Tom Cruise on screen because I'm not a Tom Cruise fan. But I liked it was very Hollywood. It was very yeah. American. I mean, what's more LA than Scientology? No, and I like what they did with the Hollywood sign and all that. Oh, that I, I loved. I thought that the that in, I loved. the intro was very LA, very American. Yeah, uh, which yeah, I liked. yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, anyway, but. After the Olympics ended, I saw a lot of 
like content online of people like sort of like okay now that the olympics are over what do i do and <laughs> a lot of people that were like wow for 17 days we were all watching the same thing right. And now, Water cooler moments. and now we go back to our own little silos. And that made me think of what you and I have always talked about. And I don't know how much about it we've talked about it here on the show about the the end of monoculture. Yep. And I think the Olympics is one of those rare, rare moments where there's still a monoculture, like <laughs> barely, but it's still sort of there. Um, because people are either watching the Olympics at you know at home or they're uh, watching it you know watching clips on their phone, but but most people are either into it or know of it, right? right? Even if they're not people like me, um, but. You know, that goes with what you and I always talk about, how today there's just so much content and there's so much media and there's so many shows and there's so many movies that there's no monoculture anymore. And, and you know, a lot of times when you use the word mono, you use it sort of in a negative connotation. Yes, yes. I don't think monoculture is a bad thing because it's shared experiences that we had mostly through entertainment, whether it was movies and all that. And I just... I mean, you and I have talked about this yeah. at length on know, the show too, the sh but not so much like in terms of the term monoculture because that's a term that's used now. But I feel that we are at a place right now where there's just so much content that, as you said, there's no water cooler moments and things like that. No, at all. And it, you know, we've said this before because we have talked about monoculture, and I think the way that you and I have always summed it up is like inevitably we'll be on some website or whatever, and it'll be like you know. This week, season 32 debuts of some show on Amazon or whatever. And we're right. like, I've never heard of this in my life. Right. But apparently people watch it because it's on season 30-something, you know. Right. And and I think, yeah, monoculture now, it's it's the Olympics every four years. The Super Bowl. Right. Um, I guess if you're in Europe, uh, Eurovision. The Tour de France. Right. Like, it's, it's like very, very select. Yeah, very things. select items. And, again, and that's just funny because... That's those are then also why those things can um, ask for a premium for advertising. Right. And Mira, I, I I mentioned to this to you several times. Although you weren't into the show, I think one of the few monoculture moments we've had in the last ten years or so was the ending of Game of Thrones. Yeah, a hundred percent. Because so many people were into that show, and there were people who were watching who watched the end who didn't even watch the show. Didn't like, you come to like my viewing me. party? Yeah, I was at the viewing party, yeah. Yeah, here. I mean, I yeah. freaking had dragons <laughs> in my viewing party. It was a very messy viewing party. <laughs> <laughs> the parking was a bitch with those dragons. <laughs> um, right. You didn't watch it, but you still were but I, part but I of it. I knew what was going on. Right. You right, were, right. But you were part of that experience. Right. No, no, but, but to what you're saying. I didn't know the minutia, the details, but like I knew, uh, you know, I knew who Cersei was. I knew about Hodor. Yeah. I knew, you know, you knew about yeah. these things. And, you know, it's funny because. Um, recently I was talking to my kid about Titanic and I was explaining to him how up to the point Titanic was released I had never let me let me rephrase that being a kid in the 80s and 90s we went through a lot of huge movies a mm -hmm. lot of summer blockbusters I think that that was the era of summer blockbusters but nothing whether you liked the movie or not nothing compared to Titanic yeah um, nothing the whole world watched Titanic over and over again Titanic premiered in December of 97 and I think in the fall of 98 it was still in theaters that is how big that movie was the the movie the actors the song the phenomenon it it, it was a phenomenon, and I think that that is something in terms of monoculture that just doesn't exist anymore. Because as big as there have been subsequent movies after Titanic, like Avatar, Avatar made more money than Titanic. Mm -hmm. How many people do you know watched Avatar? Were people talking about Avatar? I was going to say, it's not about how many people have seen it. It's about... How long are they talking about it after the fact? Right. Like, I'll I'll even go let let bring it way more current. Uh, Deadpool and Wolverine, mm -hmm. huge. It's 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 breaking records left, right, and center. I went to go see it. I loved it. I thought it was hilarious and this and that. For all of its pop culture like breakthroughs or, mm -hmm. or whatever, I don't know that it's going to have the shelf life of a Titanic in terms of the global phenomenon of it all. Right, and I agree that that one's been one of the bigger ones. Yeah. In the, like the last maybe couple of years, because for the first like it's been out for like two weeks, right? Uh, 
I think as of now, it's maybe a month. Right. Um, Ryan Reynolds and this guy were everywhere. Yeah. I know about like they used in sync. They used Madonna. Well, like a prayer saw an increase in streams. Yeah. It, like, so did yeah. Bye Bye Bye. Yeah. So the song definitely, the movie certainly. But what I'm saying is that even movies that have been very successful in the last 10, 15, 20 years, they've had their moments, but nothing has had a big impact like Titanic did. Mm -hmm. And the reason I use the Titanic example is because, again, the lack of monoculture. Yeah. Everybody is so into their silos and into their like little niches and, and, and stuff that as a collective, we are not watching things together as we used to at one point. And, and you know, I, I think that that's, that's sad because, again, you could have your own take on things and you could have your own things that you love and subject matter that you love. But I think there's something to be said for that shared experience mm -hmm. that whether it was a movie or whether it was a show, that the next day you were in school, you were at work, yeah. and everybody was talking about that. Everybody was talking about that movie, about that show, that season, you know, cliffhanger in the, the last episode of the season. That performance. And, and that really doesn't happen anymore. No. Very, very rarely does it happen. And I, and I think that that's, that's sad. We, we don't have a lot of shared experiences like we used to at one point. Yeah, and I, I mean, I, I will say, I think there are shared experiences with younger generations. And God, I'm going to sound like the old fart in the room now, right? Because I have seen it like with Tristan and, and his friends sometimes where they're all talking about the same things, right? And I understand friend groups tend to, obviously that's why you're friends. They tend to have the same interests, right? But I wonder if there's a if there's an element of monoculture, this is going to sound weird, siloed monoculture, mm -hmm. which is like, there are things like, for instance, Fortnite, I'll use as an example. Fortnite, is very well known. I mean, people play it. It's 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 a big that little dance a few years back, right? It's it's very like people know it, quote unquote, right? But whereas before, you know, your grandmother down to you know a five year old would know about Titanic, right? Yeah. Whereas now, you know about Fortnite because you have a kid who plays Fortnite, and so obviously that the same way that your parents knew about Mario Brothers because mm -hmm. you played Nintendo. But I think there's a cap. Mm -hmm. There's a cap on that, even that siloed monoculture knowledge. Mm -hmm. You know? Yeah, I mean, and look, and again, that's not to say there aren't things that sort of break through. Stranger Things, I would say, is the most the most good example of the most good, wow, not good English, um, of that phenomenon. Because I think Stranger Things people know what right. it is. It They do. But again, there hasn't been anything because, again, going back many, many, many decades, you know, even before our time. And I know we talked about this on the show, like in Dallas, who shot Jr. The whole shot, you who shot Jr. I think we weren't even born when that happened, but I remember being a kid. We knew about it, and people still talking about who shot Jr. <laughs> right? Yeah, and so that would have been seven, eight years later after we were born. You know that people were still talking about who shot Jr. and. That was a huge pop culture moment, you know. Mm -hmm. um, you know, you know. It's funny because when I think of the '80s, you know, it's one of the ones that pop in my mind the most. And um, everybody saw that, everybody remembered. But I think a lot of people now, in retrospect, don't or don't think of one of the top ones. I feel that everybody watched the whole thing with Geraldo Rivera looking for the uh, Al Capone's vault. Al Capone, yes, yes, <laughs> live on television. That was huge. Yeah. Do you know what everybody used to watch in the '80s and '90s? Everybody used to watch David Copperfield. Oh, all of them. Yeah. Do you remember when he disappeared? The Statue of Liberty. Liberty disappeared? I'm surprised he brought it back. I remember it, this was like in the early or mid 90s because I was already in like middle school. He did something, David Copperfield, on the train. He did something with the train mm -hmm. and he put like cards on board. And you had to, he was like, okay, move uh, three cards and move five cards. And he's mm -hmm. like, are you in the caboose? And I remember <laughs> following along and being like, how does he know I'm in the caboose? <laughs> like, but, uh, and then every, the next day, everybody would be talking about freaking right. David Copperfield. Even beauty pageants. Like, oh, Miss America. Everybody was into that stuff. I think Miss America now is on YouTube. Yeah. Like, it just kept getting downgraded yeah. in terms of where you it know, was. And again, whether you liked it or not, these were shared experiences that people had, and, and on and on and on. I mean, look, I remember when we were in middle school and high school, which was, I think, like sort of like the peak of must-see TV or, yeah. and all that, uh, with friends and all that. Everybody would talk about that. 
you would hear people talking the next day about it, about what they were watching on television and, and all that. And, and again, even you know, if you didn't like the show, because there were people who probably never saw one episode of Melrose Place mm-hmm. and can still tell you that Kimberly blew up the building. Yeah. Or that she pulled off her wig, right? It's just right. it's just these moments that are ingrained in us collectively. And it was things like when we were in school, like the teacher would watch and you would watch and right. your parents would watch. And yeah, I just, I think it's very different now. It's very, very different. Yeah. And and it's a shame. And again, I, I mentioned Titanic because I, I not, you know, I no, love that movie. One. It's one of my favorite movies. But I think the Titanic, it's interesting because I think Titanic for being the most monumental example of monoculture and, and something... In, in pop culture having a lasting and sort of it, it's sort of like nothing mm-hmm. nothing has gotten close to being the scope of Titanic but it's funny because not too long after that is when it started like it was literally like the last moment yeah it was the biggest and the last moment. yeah it went out with a bang <laughs> yeah literally <laughs> or a sinking <laughs> yeah sinking yeah sinking <laughs> I mean, listen, I remember, for those of us who were around in 98, don't you remember that My Heart Will Go On, they started playing it on the radio with audio clips of the movie? Yes. Yeah. (laughs) Because they were like, fuck it, even we're bored. Yeah. We need to spice this up somehow. Yeah. Yeah. And then after a few months, then they changed the audio to other parts of the movie, like other scenes of the movie. I can't think of a movie that, a, a song, a soundtrack that did that. The only other song that did that with um, was Streets of Philadelphia that they they I think after a while started inserting as well yeah. clips from the movie. Yeah. yeah, I mean that was a popular song. No, but that's what I'm saying. There was two that yeah. I can think of. But I think, but but our our generation is a good example of that because I think that we, our generation or people that were around mm-hmm. that were moviegoers in the 80s and 90s. I think that was the peak of like the summer blockbuster. Well, I mean, it started with Jaws. Summer blockbuster yeah. started with Jaws. So yeah. So 70s, 80s, yeah. 90s. Yeah. 100%. Like that was the peak. Because now like the summer comes around and you're like, so what's the summer blockbuster again? It's because it, it's all IP. Yeah. It's like, all IP. What is it again? You know? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, <laughs> okay. Something I wanted to bring up. Okay. Um, it's a great thing, but like <laughs> I love that you're prefacing it. Well, no, because like everything on the internet. Um, oh, okay. it's a great well, thing. Yeah. So this week, I, I think there had been talks about this before, but it was officially announced that the great Celia Cruz, yes, is well, going to be. We we had mentioned this before. We had mentioned it yes. before, but it was like officially. Like, like they, they really showed it. the the coin and all that. It's in circulation. How Celia Cruz um, is now going to be on what is it a quarter? It's the quarter. The quarter. Yeah. And it's a series of quarters they're going to make on like. So the, the quarters have for a while now um, on the back have been used to to uh, spotlight historical figures. Right. So there is an entire and within that there's a subset of like women of history who've mm-hmm. done things of note. So I think there's like, you know, there's like um, Sally Ride is on one of them. So it's women who have made an impact in, in American culture. Mm-hmm. And so Celia Cruz, as we mentioned before, and, and it's now in circulation. Enrique Santos is even like, did you see his post? No. Enrique Santos is basically going around, my, gone around Miami with like a bunch of the quarters. And what he's done is he's put them underneath like a... A sticker for his radio station so if you go and peel it off you can find it's like a little Before. scavenger hunt. okay um so they're in circulation and she's the first afro latina mm-hmm. to be featured on on the coin so obviously we were really happy to see that you know yeah. the great celia cruz made it on the u.s currency and, put her and, on everything and we we had talked about this here here before and i mean who better than than celia cruz unfortunately oh god um you know, I, I did read a lot of the comments, in, whether it was coming. ABC News or whatever news source that was, you know, mm-hmm. reporting about this. And I can't tell you the overwhelming amount of comments that I saw of people saying, oh, she is an American. Why is she on the coin? And it's just, it's really sad that we've come to a point where we can't be happy and celebrate that somebody that came from nothing was able to rise to the point where she does she did that mm-hmm. she is on a coin oh um, you mean a, 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 not taking the fact that Celia Cruz was an American citizen yeah so she was an American so she deserves to be on that coin and again 
it's just very sad that we can't be happy about this. Whether you knew who she was, whether her music and legacy had an impact on you, whether it did or not, but that we can't celebrate the achievement of this woman without having to fall to such a negative and stereotypical trope like, oh, she's not an American. She's an immigrant. Why is she on U.S. currency? You know why she's on U.S. currency? Because she was an American and she was quite remarkable and quite incredible and she deserves to be on that coin. That's why. And let's not forget that her story is literally the American dream. It is. The American dream. I'll say that again. American dream. Also, all of those people who are commenting, unless they can trace their ancestry back to like Navajo or Cherokee mm-hmm. or something, yeah, you're also not American. Yeah. So, you know, pack it in. That's why I don't read the comment sections of anything. Pa' qué? Pa' ruinarme el día. No, mío. Pa' que te dolor de cabeza. No, total. See, I was all happy about we were talking about this and then you had to ruin it with the comment section. I ruined it. You ruined it with the comment section. You know, why? people just need to start to read. Number one, there are people who like that's their whole purpose. They're trolls. Fine. Fair enough. You know what? If that's what brings you sad joy, then go have your sad joy. Sad joy. Yeah, it's because it's a sad version of joy. Um, I would totally have an almond joy right now. Me too. Oh, sometimes you feel like a nut. Sometimes you don't. Almond joints got nuts. And mounds don't. Because sometimes, sometimes you, you feel, feel like, like a, a nut. Boop. Sometimes you don't. Mm. Anyway. So that was a non-paid... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> We literally just did the whole jingle. <laughs> Again, monoculture. Monoculture. That's how why we remember pe- this. How many people? <laughs> you know what jingle people know nowadays? And it's like not even a jingle. Safe life replace. No, safe life repair. Return. Safe, safe life, life replace. replace. But it is a jingle. <laughs> it's a jingle. It's, it's got music. It's a jingle. <laughs> yeah. Safe life repla- repair. Safe, safe life, life replace. replace. <laughs> Again, we're just giving away sponsorships today. Uh, <laughs> uh, doling them out um it's it's this need of people to always comment it's like not everything is for you and that's okay mm-hmm. that's okay there's a lot of shit out there that i just don't care for mm-hmm. i don't comment on it i move on with my life mm-hmm. i don't care for chip and joanna games <laughs> yeah i just i mean i don't have anything against them Me i do just I. don't i just turn the page yeah i just they don't do anything for no. me. And you know what the thing about them is? I, they are for me. And, you know, I mean, a lot of listeners may be like, what is he talking about? For me, they are the example of people of like, I don't care about the personality. Just show me the final product. That's how I feel about the Food Network. That's why I don't watch the Food Network as much anymore. Mm-hmm. Because it's like I used to watch the Food Network for food. Which is not what you get there now. Right. Now it's the chef and the personality. No. Yeah. I don't want to watch a show about Guy Fieri. I want to watch a f- show about food. And if Guy Fieri's hosting it, fine. Right. Right. But that's how I feel about Chip and Joanna Gaines. That, I get it. And and it's nothing even against them. No. They're not unlikable people. But it's like I feel the show and I and I realize they built an empire. and On their personality. Know, on their personality. I get it. But it's like, I, I just show me the finished product of the house. Yeah. I, I don't need this fake argument between the two of you of like Joanna wanting to do something and then Chip being like, no. I'm yeah. He's so wacky. Yeah. yeah oh. Yeah. Uh, they seem likable enough, but I just don't care for it. No. I mean, and again, there's people who are into it. I mean, yeah, there's people who are into it. So great. Yeah. Have, have at it. Enjoy. Yeah. Yeah. That's HGTV. Yes. The home and the garden. Home and garden television. Yeah. <laughs> what, what do they even put on there now? Well, now they have a lot of, um, they have competition shows, of course. Of? Like they, what they'll do is, I know all of this because Jose works for Warner Discovery, um, so we watch a lot of these shows on Max. Mm-hmm. Um, so they, they'll do like it changes by season. So they'll have like bash at the uh, challenge at the beach or whatever. So what they do is they'll find some beachfront, um, but nothing about home and community. Garden. Well, it's a home that they're repairing. Mm-hmm. So they find like these places and then they split them up into teams. And it's like amateur repair people and designers and they team them up with a professional like a personality not even a professional personality and then they have to con- you know every week it's like okay today you have to convert the living room and so they do that and blah 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 but then during the day they do have like these people who flip houses and they show you how they do the renos and all that of all these channels that have fallen the ones <laughs> i miss the most i mean mtv's a whole other story mtv could be a whole episode of the podcast <laughs> i think it has been um yeah 
is uh, A&E and TLC. Oh, yeah. A&E was all about documentaries. I mean, hello. Biography. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> hello. I mean. <laughs> I mean, they had to create a channel for it. <laughs> <laughs> A&E biography. Yeah. yeah. One of the documentaries I've watched the most, which is Floating Palaces on a on, oh, it's from A&E? On, on Ocean Liners. That is from A&E. Oh, I didn't know I that. I first saw it in A&E in 1997. <laughs> Oh, and TLC, I don't even know what the hell that is That is, is what actually started my love of ocean liners. Oh, so you just stumbled on that once. and I always sort of liked ships. You know, I liked ships, but what really sealed the deal was that documentary. It's a four-part documentary on the history of ocean liners. Huh. And I saw that when I was like in the 11th grade, and my life has never been the same since, which is funny. Years later, I'm talking about like... Five, six, seven, eight years after that aired, I went on ane.com and I'm like, hmm, let me see if they sell this documentary. And I remembered it. And they did have it. And I bought the box set. And the rest are. is history. And here we are. <laughs> um, what is the T- TLC nowadays? What does it stand for? N- nothing. nothing. <laughs> <laughs> no, they literally will tell you. They're like, it's no longer the learning channel. So, but what do they air there now? All of the 90 Day Fiance things. Oh. Like, it's literally, mira, it's 90 Day Fiancé, it's 90 Day Fiancé before the 90 days, it's 90 Day Fiancé the other way, 90 Day Fiancé Fulano and Fulana's family, 90 Day Fiancé, uh, 90 days that didn't work out, 90 Day Fiancé. So it's it, all about 98? It's pretty much all 98, yeah. That or my 600 pound life. I thought you were going to say 98 degrees. No. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. anyway. Bueno, what do you have for me? So I have a couple things, but I, I kind of wanted to to start on something kind of fun um so a couple weeks ago uh well it was a week ago no a couple weeks ago i was out shopping for stuff for my for my birthday party so i went to dollar tree because i was not paying you know full price for like a stack of plates that was like eight plates i was not gonna pay 30 dollars for that shit so whatever go ahead so i'm in line and i'm about to pay and i there's two registers open the girl at my register the cashier i see that she's talking She's like, whatever, I don't pay attention. I, I assume she's talking to the lady at the other register. Mm-hmm. Okay, fine, whatever. But then lo and behold, as I make my way around the register to bag my things, I notice that not only is she on the phone FaceTiming someone, mm-hmm. they didn't even bother to put earphones on. Oh, no, yeah. So now I'm hearing this entire conversation about how her abuela le encanta no sé qué, like, you know, blusas de no sé qué. Da, da, da. And all I could think of was like, oh, we just don't care anymore. No, but we don't. We just don't care anymore. We don't. We just, I mean, because at this point, now we're not even talking about some rando in the aisle. You know what I mean? Like, out and about on his day. No, no, no. This person's on the clock. Do you remember my story a and couple of months Nobody before, cared. My couple of months uh, ago. Of the barber that I went to go, cut my hair at the barber shop. And and this wasn't the barber shop I always go to. This was another one. Right. That he <laughs> called his family in Cuba. He called his travel agent and booked his travel to Cuba all while he was cutting my hair. Okay. While I may have thoughts and opinions on that, I'm assuming that this person, that's probably his business. No. He just has the chair. Yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. Never mind. Because I was like, compared to this girl who she's... On the clock, right? At, like, I and, mean, and a barber at, is giving you personalized, personal service. That's true with sharp instruments. Yeah, <laughs> I wasn't mad because I'm like content. Well, no, I wasn't mad at her either. I didn't care one way or the other. But what I thought was interesting is that she didn't even bother putting in like, but they like, like them, earbuds. But none of them don't. Do you know who's number one on the? Who I'm gonna add to that list? My father. Are you serious? Oh yeah, with FaceTime. My, not FaceTime with speakerphone. Okay. My father has full conversations on speakerphone. And I'm like, you've become one of those people. You know what? Okay, but is he having those like full speakerphone conversations in the middle of like the store? Oh yeah, for oh, sure. Oh okay. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. But you know what? Okay. I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna not defend your no, father. No, 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 no. But let me but to. let me finish. But let me, you know, maybe after a certain age you need to hear things a little louder so that so you're using the speakerphone for that reason. You no, know what I'm saying? That's okay, let's let's say that's the case. No, that's not the case. But you know what you don't need to do? FaceTime. No, that's not the case. He does that because he doesn't want to put his <laughs> the phone to his arm. Okay, well, that too. <laughs> but let's go back to FaceTime. His phone to his ear, I mean. Why do you need to see me? Was she calling Cuba? I couldn't tell. Because they I usually, tell. They usually you FaceTime with, or WhatsApp when mm-hmm. they call Cuba. Right. but It's like a Cuba thing. Right, but, they're, but they FaceTime like at the gym. 
uh, on the treadmill. Don't you remember years ago? Like why the story of what I was at UFIT and I was there waiting to use the cable extension machine, and the guy was working out while talking to his friend, family member in Cuba. And like I heard when the guy in Cuba was like, "Oh yeah, tu eres tremendo tigre," and I'm like, "Oh my god." <laughs> <laughs> and here I am in line wanting to use a fucking, you know, and it's one of those things that like on the one hand, I'm like raging mad, but on the other, I'm like cracking up oh, no, no. at it, the audacity. Right. But okay. In that instance, I would have been really pissed off because I'm waiting to fucking use the machine. Yeah. But like, again, what, what caught me off guard was just like the blatant, just like, yeah, no, I'm on the clock, but I'm having a conversation. Like, yeah. I was like, oh, I'm sorry. Am I interrupting your call? Yeah. Right. I mean, she, she, she rang me up. It's not like she made a face or anything, but it's like. I didn't mean for work to get in the way of your social life. Mm-hmm. So I'm so sorry. Mm-hmm. You yeah. know, but then let me say, go. Right. And you're the bad one. And you're the bad one. Yeah. So unfortunately, um, and this may lose us a Dollar Tree um, sponsorship. <laughs> so I love saving like anybody else at the Dollar yes. Tree. But I've actually, I wouldn't say I've stopped going to the Dollar Tree. Uh oh. But I go to the Dollar Tree only when. I need something that I really need to get out of the Dollar Tree and I don't want to pay full price. And I have the time because going to the Dollar Tree will take you at least half hour because I have found that most of the Dollar Trees that I go to are understaffed. Yes, they are. They're Significantly. understaffed. There's one person at the cash register um, because I used to obviously go to the Dollar Tree by my house. Mm-hmm. And in the Dollar Tree, I un señor that he's about 90 years old and he rings everybody up. I do not get upset at that. He's an old man. He's, he's doing his job. He's doing his job. He's making a living. Yes, there's 40 people in line. But you know what? I, I That poor man is working and he yeah. shouldn't be working, but he is working and I'm not going to give right, that right. man a hard time. Um but done, it does nonetheless take long. Then I've gone to other... I do go to the Dollar Tree by my parents' house. I go to the Dollar Tree by my office. I go to different Dollar Trees and it's all the same story. There's like one person in the cash register mm-hmm. and there's like 20 people in line. No, see, I was so surprised there was two people so, when I went. So then it's like, okay, so I came to buy something cheap. But, you know, this is so understaffed that now... It's not that I'm waiting an extra few minutes in line. It's that... I'm like half an hour, not half an hour, but I'm at least 15 minutes in line right. at the Dollar Tree. And then, you know, because it is the Dollar Tree, people make high vo- voluminous purchases. Yes, yes. It's like, hi, I'm buying 45 things <laughs> that all have to be scanned. And now, because the Dollar Tree, everything is not a dollar. <laughs> right. So you can't be like, oh, you know, a dollar or a dollar 25 times 45. No, it's like you have to scan each one of them. You know, on the Season Quick and five and below. Oh, yeah. 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 They're more discerning. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's what happens when not everything is a dollar twenty five. <laughs> yeah. No, no, no. The dollar tree here by my house? Oh, no, no, no. You go in and it's snap, snap, snap. And they have the... But I feel a different clientele goes to five and below. <laughs> That's also a big... Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And they have yeah. a lot... In five and below, they have the self-scanner. And I'm like, dale para. Yeah, I'm yeah, going yeah. to scan my, my own well, items. The one here by your house? Dollar Tree has the self-scan, No. No. There, which, which, which is the one that has it? There's no, one that the Dollar has Tree it. by my house is the one that has a 90-year-old man. <laughs> it's the one by the, the gym I go to. Never mind. Yeah. Yeah. There was one that, like, I'm like, oh, this this is going to help. You know what? It didn't help. No. Because here's the thing, to your point about the clientele. Now what you've got is 90-year-olds <laughs> trying, to use, <laughs> trying to use an automated system. And yeah. it's not going to work the same way it did not work f- at CVS <laughs> the other day. Oh. <gasps> When there was literally, there was like, I think that they took, you know, La Juavita de los Viejitos. Yeah. I think they dropped it off at CVS. I got there. Había una línea. Were you at CVS by my house? No, the one on Coralway in 87. Okay. Había una línea so backed up that I was like, what is going on here? Literally the average age of that line was maybe 85. Okay. They were all trying the to ring out? yeah the self checkout they were trying to ring things up then they had questions right. then they couldn't understand then they wanted to apply a coupon but the coupon CBS was CVS is the worst for self checkout because you have to, everybody there's with a coupon and then there was a lady who was causing the line to be longer because she was standing in the line but she wasn't in line she was just standing in the line so eventually i asked her like señora tú estás en la línea i know i gente atrás de mí it's like yes you're in the line <laughs> well what does she think she was doing <laughs> 
No, the CVS by my house. Have you been there recently? They with s- you. Somebody had the great idea of getting rid of just of all the cash registers. There's only one left, and there's never anybody there, and it's all the self checkouts. <laughs> so están toda la vieja right. buying at CVS with their coupons, and then they don't know how to apply the coupon. <laughs> so then there's me, and it's like. I just came to buy like a deodorant. Deodorant. Like I just came to buy like a bottle of shampoo. Why am I waiting? I, I realize these are first world problems. The definition, yeah. But it's like, okay, I mean seriously, like they should have they should have like okay. They should have a line for, for people who know how to use a self checkout and for the people who don't. Right? Like 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 the TSA pre check. Right. Yes. The people that don't know how to use it or are a little shaky, there will be an attendant there to help you. And then there could be the express express lane. These are for the like ones that like dale. Phone number scan go. I'm pretty sure that some of those old ladies are still at that CVS. Oh, and this was like sure, two weeks for ago. For sure, for sure. For sure. Like oh, I just I can't. I can't. Okay. So I actually wanted to bring up, and this is a more this is a more serious okay. conversation. And more All right. um so here we go. We even lowered our voices. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to Pero Let Me Tell You. Hard talk, hard conversations with Pero Let Me Tell You. That sounded wrong. Hard conversations with Pero Let Me Tell because You. Because of the tone that you use. No, me <laughs> though. I, my tone is not your tone. <laughs> anyway, so as we know or may not know, um, Snow White, the live animated, no, live. L- live action. Live action, <laughs> live animated. Live uh, <laughs> <laughs> Well, this one actually is sort of live animated True. because it has both. But the live action version of Snow White is coming out, which I still don't know why they are releasing these live action movies because with a few exceptions like The Little Mermaid and Beauty and the Beast, they haven't really done all that well. Uh, they make money and they own the property. Yeah. So, But nonetheless, we're getting another one. And I remember when this first got casted, the girl who got casted, there was a hoopla oh, about yeah. her because she was Latina. And then to make matters worse, like she was sort of like, oh, I didn't watch Snow White. I didn't care for yeah. Snow White. And it's like, girl, you don't want to mess with the Disney crowd. Those people... <laughs> Those those Disney adults will come and like they don't fuck around. They will come and stuff that apple down your like mouth. You're like, not getting out of that glass coffin, honey. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, so as you know, it's the story of Snow White and the Seven Dwarves, yes. and there has been a quite the controversy. I'm sure you know, but maybe our listeners our listeners may or may not know. In addition to the casting of Snow White, there has been quite the controversy regarding. The casting of the seven dwarves. And Disney sort of didn't know what way to go. And ultimately, um, one of the people who was like very critical of the movie when it first they first uh re- said they were going to mm-hmm. do a live action of Snow White like two or three years ago, one of the people who was the most critical was Peter Dinklage. Okay. Right? Fair. Because he was saying that like, why are we even, why do are we even continuing the narrative of seven dwarves in Snow White? Right? Um, and Peter Dinklage has been very, very vocal about, you know, I think the the correct term is not dwarves, is little people, LPs. I believe. But yeah. when I think LPs, I think of a long play. Oh, I, th- I think of a landing page. <laughs> You think of when you think an L really? I'm doing a lot of marketing lately. Oh, okay, really? When you think of an LP, you think of a, a landing. No, page? I think of landing page because that's been my life for the, like the last three weeks. Okay, not not a record. I mean, really, right now, no. Okay, for the rest of humanity, they probably think of a long play, which is a record. Nonetheless, um, I digress. He was very vocal about that. Um, about that, people that you know are little people, LP. Um, you know, they should be given roles that are not like traditional roles or roles that are for somebody that is small. Like, you know, he was a good example. Mm -hmm. Peter Peter Dinklage has done a lot of roles that are not necessarily written for somebody that is small um, or little. And he's sort of been very vocal about that. The flip side to that and the, sort of backlash that he has gotten from the you know sm- you know small people dwarves you know community is that hey we a lot of us are actors there's never any roles for us mm. right there's never any roles for us you know and we're growing up we're we are 
living in a time where there's so many people who say, well, if you're a gay person, right. you know, if there's a gay role, it should be by a gay person because there, is, there aren't a lot of, you know, roles for that. If it's a trans role, it should be by a trans person and so on and so on and so forth. So why does this apply to us? And there's been a significant amount of people within that community that have said, listen, this was a once in a lifetime opportunity for a lot of people to get not only work as like, let's say the seven actors, but with that comes like the, um, the stunt people and the body doubles and oh, all yeah. that. So it's like a lot of people that could have been employed for this movie. And they were sort of annoyed that Hollywood has sort of picked Peter Dinklage as like the person to listen to. Mm -hmm. So I read a lot about that and there was a lot of back mm -hmm. and forth about that because ultimately what's going to happen now, I mean, I'm sure you know, is that in the Snow White movie, they're animated. It's sort of like CGI. It's almost like Polar Express. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. And then they were also saying they were being critical about The Hobbit of like, why didn't they use, you know, oh, yeah. in The Hobbit, why didn't they use, you know, little people the same uh, for um, Snow White and the Huntsman mm -hmm. a few years ago with the Tachikita from yeah, Twilight. Yeah, uh -huh. uh, that they used, you know, regular size people and they just made them smaller to look, you know, uh, did you see that movie? No, I didn't see that movie. To look like a little person, right? Okay. Through the magic of computer animation, if you will. But the point is that in the Snow White movie, they aren't using actors. It's sort of like a CGI thing. So what's your take on that? It's it's interesting to me. And God knows, you know, I, I'm not going to speak on behalf of a community that I'm not a part of. Um, it's funny. The first thing I, that, I mean, you probably saw my face. I didn't even stop to think about, like, the stunt people, the body. Like, it, aside from the fact of, like, yeah, you're right. You know, this, these are people who aren't going to necessarily get an opportunity to be a for better or worse right i mean it is what it is you know a romantic lead in a movie mm -hmm. like they're just i mean it, it sucks but they're just they're not right so yeah to to kind of come out and be like i understand the i understand peter dinklage's perspective on on you know like let's not perpetuate the stereotype mm -hmm. so to speak right because I, I think of it in the terms of like you know as a gay latino right like do we need you know, John Leguizamo to come out and play Chi Chi from Tu Wong Fu in every single movie? Well, no, because that's quote unquote stereotypical. But if somebody's gonna play it, at least it's a Latino. Like you know what I mean? So so there's there's two two sides to every coin. What I what I will say about that is I think that there's something to be said for authenticity. And especially nowadays, you know, Peter Dinklage is in a very, very rarefied position. Yeah, they say that he's, you know, that what a lot of people within the community are upset about, about him is that he's the exception to the rule. Right. And that he's a, he's saying that from a point of privilege. Right. Thank you. That's the, that's the word I was looking for, privilege. Um, but I think also in this day and age where what we're seeing is a lot of discussion over things like AI. Mm -hmm. If we're going to start creating these barriers to entry, studios are going to start saying... Which is probably what happened here, and to some degree, you know what? It's not even worth a hassle. We'll just animate them. Fuck it. Yeah. Right. And so now nobody wins. Mm -hmm. You know. So now there's actors out there who will never get work because, out of an almost fear, uh, to to not offend or to you know, it it almost makes the pendulum swing too far, one way, as opposed to trying to find a happy medium. You know, when I was reading that. Um, cause I read several articles about that, um, because I knew I was going to bring it up on today's episode. I, um, I was thinking, well, if they ever redo the wizard of Oz, what are they going to do? Actually, that's an interesting thing. Um, with wicked coming out. Mm -hmm. So in wicked, the munchkins, uh, in munchkin land are actually well, not. Wait, they, they did redo the, <laughs> you know what? I didn't even think you about put wicked. Two and two together, no. Yeah. So I don't know how the movie's doing it, but in, in just the, the, the play, you know, you don't have them played by little people, but that's also just a matter of of economy of cast. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? It's like the cast you have is the people, who, they're going to be munchkins, they're going to be flying monkeys, they're going to be Emerald City, they're, you know, they're just going to be everybody because it's the, the, the chorus. I don't know what they'll do. I don't know if they're going to go that route or if they're just going to totally sidestep it and just be like, it's munchkin land, but everybody's just, you know, average height. Right. Because I haven't heard any kerfuffle one way or the other. Right. Um, 
<laughs> there I was thinking like, oh, if they re- redo the Wizard of Oz. <laughs> well, actually, they just did. They kind of are. <laughs> um, Alphaba. <laughs> yep. Um, you know what? Maybe I'll watch that. Maybe. Maybe. Maybe that's as close as you're going to get me to a musical. Oh, shut your face. I'm going to drag you to a musical if it kills me. Ugh. At least don't let it be an obnoxious one. I'm already plotting to get you to one, hopefully later this year. Uh, at least, yeah. Not a, don't Please don't make me watch Little Shop of Horrors. Oh, that was so much fun. No. That was so much fun. See, I the key, with, the key with getting you to a musical, especially if we do it in New York, is the cast. Yeah. Because if like Little Shop of Horrors was somebody who like if Demi Lovato was playing oh, Audrey, no. right. I'll, I'll go watch the plan. I'll go watch the eating plan. <laughs> there you go. Right. So that's why like the trick with you, like what you like, like I'm one, trying to get you, you know to go see Alyssa watch, Milano in Chicago. You know what I would watch that I've heard is really, really funny? Uh the Book of Mormon. Oh, that was fucking hilarious. Oh my god. I at one point Jose turned to me, he's like, You're laughing so loud. And I'm like, it's because I'm trying not to pee. Mm. It was, oh my God, so And Avenue funny. Q was pretty awesome. Yeah. Well, you would like Book of Mormon because it's from the South Park guys. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah, 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 yeah. Right. But the, I, yeah. I, am I crazy by saying that that's probably not like a typical musical? It's not. It's right. not. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. And, and you like Avenue Q, so that makes sense to me. Yeah. yeah. I, I just can't take the breaking into song. But it, that's literally the whole genre. I know, but that's why I don't watch music. Okay, right. No, no, no. That's what I'm <laughs> I hate when people are just like, oh, it's so unrealistic. And it's like, right. It's a musical about the witches of Oz, but that's what you're going to pinpoint as unrealistic. <laughs> and you know what, though? I do love The Wizard of Oz. That You do. I do. And do that, you know, it, that's a musical. Yeah. I'm sorry to tell you. Yeah. Do you know what really... Actually, you know, you know that we're talking about The Wizard of Oz. Why would we talk about The Wizard of Oz? <laughs> I actually learned something the other day about The Wizard of Oz that I did not know. Okay. So the parts in Cephia mm-hmm. were shot in Cephia. Yeah. Okay, the famous, famous scene where she opens the door mm-hmm. and then, you know, it's Munchkin a- Land appears in full right. color. People are like, okay, how did they shoot that? Because this was before computers, like in CGI of any sorts. I didn't know that they painted the cabin in Cephia Tones. The actress, it wasn't Judy Garland, no, the one who opens the door. It was a double. The, like, it, the, I saw it on YouTube, and it's like for a split second, only for like a second, you see her opening the door. That's not Judy Garland. They had painted her yeah. in Sevilla tones. And then the next scene, like half a second later, is already Judy Garland in, in, in color. Walking out. Walking out. Yeah. I was like, they painted her in Sevilla tones. That's how you had to do it in the 30s, <laughs> babe. I mean, <laughs> they didn't have computers. They painted her in Sevilla tones. But well. I love you know that that scene still gets me. Like I think that that scene what when nine, she opens the door when she opens the door a ninety years later. Jesus, wow, well, yeah, it's nineteen thirty nine. Oh yeah, yeah. So it's uh, eighty eighty four eighty five years later. It's still like I don't know. It still gets me. That movie just has aged so perfectly. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I I do it, love that. It's movie, very rare, which is yeah. funny because that's not the type of movie I would like. But I do, I do love that movie. You know what? It's not, but it is. Yeah. Because you're a big nostalgia person. Yeah. And that plays on that. I do, though, remember as a kid being freaking annoyed that I'm like, fucking wizard, no, he's not out of Like, <laughs> that's the point. He's a, he's a charlatan. <laughs> I know, but as a kid. <laughs> right, 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 right. You're like, oh, the God, wizard, the wizard, the wizard. wizard. And then you get there and it's like, goodbye, goodbye, <laughs> the fucking balloon. <laughs> The wizard did about as much as the oracle in Matrix. And the Matrix. <laughs> no, see, I don't know that. Like, just shut up and go in your damn balloon, <laughs> wizard. <sighs> uh, you're gonna die too. Oh, everybody in that movie's dead. <laughs> well, it's 85 years old. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I think there's a couple Munchkins still alive. No. Now. No, none? No, they're none. Oh. They're none. Oh. The last ones died. Uh, again, the Munchkins, were, they weren't that young either. No, 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 but there were some that were kids. Yeah, yeah. no, the last one died. Like, oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, so anyway. They're all somewhere over the rainbow. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know what's really weird? Okay, this is not going to make any sense. Okay, I know that's Judy Garland, but I to me, it's not Judy Garland. No, I get it. Because I watched that movie... As a kid, young adult, whatever, and I didn't see Judy Garland. I saw Dorothy. <laughs> no, no, no. I get it. I get it because she's not Judy Garland yet. Yeah. How old was she when she did that movie? She was like sixteen. Yeah. 
Right. She wasn't Judy Garland, you know. Right. And and yeah, I think a big part of that is also because we came to it like, you know, 50 years after <laughs> she made it. <laughs> and she's already been dead for like 30. Yeah, but I but even even when I would watch it that was older, like I didn't connect the two. Because the thing was that I knew of I had heard of Judy Garland, but I didn't know Judy Garland. Right. Right. <laughs> but when you think of Judy Garland, you don't think of pigtails and gingham. Right. I you guess. think of a skinny microphone with a long cord. <laughs> I guess. <laughs> I, I can't say I think too much of Judy Garland, but but I don't think of Judy Garland and I think of Judy Garland in the Wizard right. of Oz. You think of Judy I'm Garland? Glad you get it. Yeah, yeah. Do you think of Judy Garland, yeah, with like that proto Liza Minnelli haircut? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's like Judy had one haircut and Liza was like, I love mama's look. <laughs> and just went with it. Yeah. <laughs> Do you know a pop culture moment I think about at least twice a year? <laughs> twice a year? I yeah. have no And Liza Minnelli, listen. <laughs> right now, there's a friend of ours who's into musical who's going to listen to this and she's going to gasp and like get her car off the road when she hears oh, this. Oh, no. I didn't... Okay. I like to think I'm a very well-rounded person. Okay. Right? You know I am. I think our listeners know whole, in yes. 312 episodes, I'm a very well-rounded person. And there's even things that I don't we don't talk about in the show because you're not into. Like, right. I'm also into sports. Right. But we don't talk about sports because you're not into right, sports, right. right? Musicals are one thing that I just are a... It's a blind spot. Blind spot for me. I did not know <laughs> that it uh, was famous for cabaret. I didn't know. I didn't know about cabaret. I don't know a single song in cabaret. I just know there's a musical called cabaret. That's what I know. That's what she won the Oscar for, I think. I don't know. I just... <laughs> See that not when I say not too long ago, I mean a couple of years ago. They're like, oh, and her break, you know, <laughs> yeah, her award winning uh, performance in cabaret, and I'm like, oh, Liza Minnelli did cabaret, <laughs> like. I don't know none of that. Like, I don't have any clue who Victor Victoria is. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know none of that. <laughs> Listen, you can't know everything. <laughs> Was she a Victor Victoria too? I don't know what that is. <laughs> Victor Victoria sounds like the name of, I don't know, an old school, like, <laughs> peluqueria. Well, it's definitely unisex. <laughs> Victor Victoria was played by Julie Andrews. Uh, by Mary Poppins. By Mary okay. Poppins, yes. By Mary Poppins. Was this yeah. after Mary Poppins? Yes. 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 It was a Blake Edwards directed the movie, and she was married to Blake Edwards at the time. Mira, that I don't like musicals, that I don't care for Mary I love Disney, and I don't care for Mary Poppins. Mary Poppins, to me, there are moments in it that I enjoy, but as yeah. a movie. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I was like, why are there penguins in carousels? I'm like, oh, but then you get Dick Van Dyke's horrible Cockney accent. <laughs> Wait, so what's Victor Victoria? You didn't tell me. That's you know, so I, much, I, so I, much I, laughing. You didn't tell I, me well, what it is. Because the way you said it, you're like, I don't know who Victor Victoria is. <laughs> like, it's this person. <laughs> Okay, so full disclosure, I've never seen Victor Victoria okay. either. All I know is it, Julie Andrews in it plays a it plays Victor Victoria. The, and I've never seen it, so I don't know which way this goes. I don't know if she's like a female lounge singer who pretends to be male to get work. Or a male, or a lounge, male lounge singer. singer who, because, you know, this was the 70s. We didn't have trans representation. So I don't know which way it went. But yeah, it's, it's about like she plays a man and a woman. Okay. Yes. <laughs> It's like if Yentl had music. Listen, <laughs> if you ask me what, back to Liza Minnelli, what Liza uh, Minnelli's famous <laughs> for, I don't really know. I just know she's always existed <laughs> since I've been around, and she always wears little black things. <laughs> I, I, I don't really know what Liza Minnelli, isn't that bad? I don't really, I know she's Judy Garland's daughter. I know she's been everywhere. I know she married, married David Guest. <laughs> okay, well, I mean, you know things. She was very right, good friends right, with Michael Jackson. Right, but I don't know what, what what is her thing. Like, I don't know. She Well, she's she's a, a Broadway actress. She was in Chicago. Many, many, I, many, 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 many. Because I don't ago. know, like, what movie has she been in that I. Cabarets. She got the Oscar uh, for Cabaret. I didn't watch that. No, but I mean, because yeah, you're big on the on the Academy Awards, so I'm surprised right. you don't at least know that she won for that. No. <laughs> um, you know, she was in my favorite 
who the hell had this idea to get these two people as a romantic couple? Uh, Arthur. Okay, I know the movie Arthur. Actually, I knew Dudley Moore, but I didn't know she was in that movie. <laughs> I know the song of the movie. I didn't know she was in that movie. Does she play a normal person in that movie? I don't think she's ever played a normal person. <laughs> I don't think if you're allowed to be a normal person if you're the daughter like, of Did she, did she have a Garland. 9 to 5 in the movie? <laughs> like, I don't know. <laughs> Uh, and to think that Judy Garland has two other children. <laughs> yeah, I don't know none of this. Like, yeah. I, just, I know it, but I don't know it. Like, I know these people, but, you know. Yeah, it's one of those things, that, to your point, it's like, I just, I've always known they existed. Like, like what What did Zsa, Zsa Gabor ever do? <laughs> That's like, I'm sorry, a lot of people are going to get offended by what I'm about to say. I thought Barbara Streisand was just a singer. I, I get it. Like, I just thought she was a singer. Right. I, because by the time we were coming up, her movies had were old. When I was really, 10 years old, I yeah. was an altar boy for my cousin's wedding, and her song was Evergreen by Barbara. Her first song yeah. with her husband was Evergreen by Barbara Streisand. That's, I think, the first time I ever heard Barbara Streisand. And then I remember when we were in middle school, like, she had a big comeback. And That's she had, right. like, that concert. So I knew that she was a singer. Yes. Right. I didn't know she was a Broadway... Right, yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that's where she got know, her start. Legend yeah. or whatever. Nope, didn't know that. Didn't know that. <laughs> what has she done? Barbara Streisand? Yeah. She what did... You, what, like, what did <laughs> she, did? she did Funny Face, right? Funny Girl. Oh, Funny Girl. <laughs> funny Girl. Funny Face is Audrey Hepburn. Oh, <laughs> totally different thing. <laughs> okay, her movies I know. <laughs> okay, there you go. Yeah, she did Funny Girl and then she... I think she did funny Didn't she do like The Road to Illinois or something like that? The Road to Illinois? What is that? <laughs> Wait, isn't there a musical called The Road to Illinois? There's a musical called Chicago. No, but... no, 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 no. Illinois. <laughs> Wait, there's something called The Road to Illinois. There's a musical literally on Broadway right now called Illinois. Is it that what I'm thinking about? No, because that's a new one based off of the music of uh, the guy from I, that... that I, uh, that guy that everybody likes, but I don't understand. Not Bob Dylan. Bob Geldof? No. no. Like, the people like... The, the guy who played the parrot? No, 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 no he died. <laughs> um, no, the guy... Um, 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 okay, wait, wait, we're gonna get there. Okay, not Elvis Costello, but like that genre of music. Like those people who people are like, oh my God, they're a Buddy genius. Holly? But I don't get... No. Elvis Costello and Buddy Holly. Bob Iger? I'm just... I'm You're just throwing me. names at me now. Yeah. Oh, do you think he's gonna be Victor Victoria? <laughs> Wait, what's the road to Illinois? I don't think that's a thing. No, South by Southwest. That's what I was thinking about. That's what I was thinking about. South by, wait, South by Southwest is a music festival in Austin. Totally, also, no, 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 no. Isn't there a, a musical called South by Southwest? They're South Pacific. <laughs> Okay, you know what I do know? What musical I know? I know there's a helicopter in Miss Saigon. Yes. <laughs> because yes. it's from the fall of Saigon. That I know. Yes. Historical reference. That yes, I know. there you that, go. That I know. Yes. Beta, I know things. You do know things. <laughs> it took us a while to get there. Well, I still don't know what the hell the road to Illinois is. <laughs> it's, what is it? I don't know. Am I thinking of that racist movie, Song of the South? Yeah. Maybe I'm thinking about that. Well, okay. Barbara Streisand would definitely not have been in that. <laughs> Because I don't think she could pull off Uncle Remus. No, no. <laughs> Who knew that zippity dude? Uh, zippity he was so charged. Well, but you know what? We used to sing that song. I had no context where that song came well, from. Well, you know, because our parents were from Cuba. No, but that, we used to listen to it in school in the little records. Like, I don't know what that song true. came from. Mm -hmm. That could have come from, I don't know, the Victor Three Victoria. Caballeros. <laughs> Victor Victoria's. Speaking of the Three Caballeros, and we'll, we'll wrap, wrap up it up soon. I am very upset, <clears throat> and listeners, listen, uh -oh. for those of you who love Disney, I heard oh. in the Rumorville that they are thinking of retheming the Mexico Pavilion in Epcot mm -hmm. from the Three Caballeros to... Um, Encanto. Wait, what was I thinking, Iago? No, Iago is the bird. From Aladdin. Coño, yo estoy man. <laughs> I'm mixing all the movies together. <laughs> okay. Encanto. No, not Encanto. No, no. Chocolate. No, Chocolate. No. <laughs> no eh, what, the movie. The, the really beautiful, cute movie. Eh, 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 not Chocolate. No. Um, hot Cocoa. 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 
You know, with the song that at the end, everybody cries. This is what happens when I come back after a week. We can't yeah. remember shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Co- Did you watch Coco? You know, I have not seen Coco. What? I have not. Okay, so Coco, I remember mm-hmm. when we watched Coco, mm-hmm. Tristan was really small. We watched it. But I remember when he was watching it, I wasn't paying attention. I was doing something in the kitchen mm-hmm. until the moment of the song. You know, the song. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I was like, I remember I sat down and I was like, oh my God, like, why? Like, why? Anyway, I love the movie. I yes, love yes. the movie. But they are, I heard through the, I said hot cocoa. Okay. I, uh, I was thinking chocolate and then I thought about the kangaroo, about pantouf. Oh, pantouf. Oh. I'm like, no, I'm going the wrong. These are like split second thoughts. That we literally got a glimpse into your brain. Yeah, and I was like, no, that's yeah. not it. Go back. Um. Anyway. A, they're th- they're saying that they're going to retheme the Mexican Pavilion mm-hmm. from the Three Caballeros to Coco, and I'm here to say no, <laughs> don't do it, don't do. It. Why does everything have to be from a movie? Like I don't understand. I mean, technically it already is. Okay, yes, no, 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 no. no, no, no. To your point, the Three to your Caballeros. Point, technically is, it already is. So why, why, you know, why? Yeah, it's Norway. It's a malstorm. It's I don't need uh, Edna. I mean, uh, Edna. Come on. <laughs> It's about the facts of life. <laughs> my, but what is wrong with me? Did water fall into my CPU? Like, como se llama ella? Elsa. Elsa. <laughs> okay, we need to cut. We now need to, we I need totally to want to hear Charlotte Ray singing "Let It Go." <laughs> no, we, we, we need. We need to. Things are getting out of hand. You know what? I, I, I uh, listen. I've dropped a lot of controversial bombs today. I'm just going to say it here and on the I record. Think it's great. I don't like Frozen. I don't. I said it. I made my peace. <laughs> I saw that movie. I saw that movie. I, I don't want to say after the hype. I would say during the hype. Right. And I was like, wait, 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 wait. Hold on. We are celebrating Edna. Edna. <laughs> Edna's edibles. We're celebrating Itta Chiquita. Elsa. Elsa. Oh, Elsa. Let it go. Oh, Elsa. And Elsa's a little bitch. Like, she really is. Well, you know, she has trauma. Hey, she wanted to kill her sister from that huge snowman. I don't think she knew it was her sister. She didn't know that Anna was her sister? Maybe not. She did know it was her sister. That's the whole part. Are you kidding me? I don't think she was mean. You're like, pulling. Tu me estás hablando la pata. I don't even think she meant to like. And I remember, like to scare I, remember, her. I remember. I remember. I was like, wait, 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 wait. Did she send that snowman monster to go kill Anna and that poor reindeer? I mean, what the hell? And I'm like, why is she the hero of this movie? Why? Because well, she's, she's the, not the hero. She, she's the pretty blonde one. You know, like what? I became that person. I'm like, why? Because she's the pretty blonde one. That's is why we're doing well, this. The other girl's blonde too. Anna, no, she's blondish. No, she's like, like red hair. I don't see it red. I see okay. no because to me red is like Ariel. Okay. Like isn't doesn't Edna look like Meghan McCain? They're both the Queen of Ice. Wait, now I'm calling her Edna I for lo- real, and I'm not going to correct you. <laughs> like, I know where I'm not going to correct you anymore. I want you to say this in a public so I forum. I remember watching that movie. <laughs> that you decided to remember sort of the same thing with that movie when I first finally watched. Um, a gone with the wind. Oh yeah. That yeah. I'm like, are you oh. here? Oh, she's awful. Scarlet oh Scarlet O'Hara. Scarlet O'Hara. Scarlet O'Hara. And then you watch that movie, I'm like, Scarlet O'Hara era tremenda hija de la gran. Yeah. Tu sabe que. Yeah, like, she's awful. Like that's why at the end I'm like, yeah, red. Leave her. Leave her. Yeah. Like, <laughs> Should have left her three hours ago. <laughs> like, <laughs> no wonder he went to fight the Civil War. So I felt the same way about Edna. <laughs> Tanta cosa era una pesa, era una pesa. She left everybody, you know. She, okay, she had trauma. Okay, you have trauma. You don't go send a snowman after your sister. Like, well, I've never had freezing powers. I don't know how it would affect me. <laughs> also, listeners, I want one of you, one of you, just one of you, to literally take a picture of Elsa from Frozen and put Charlotte Ray, Mrs. Edna Garrett from Facts of Life, onto it. A lot of our listeners don't know who Charlotte Ray is, which is sad, but, you know. I think more than we think. Mm. No. Edna. Edna. I called her Edna. <laughs> Edna's frozen edibles. Oh, my gosh. For, like, two years, my assistant's ringtone was, do you want to build a snowman? Oh, that song is so sad. Oh. Yeah, but imagine hearing no, it I a know, thousand I know. times but, a, uh, a day. Esa canción es para pa cortarte la vena. And I'd be like, se rita the damn snowman already, oh. yeah.
Wow, I can't believe it's already back to school time. Let's see, that means new clothes, new supplies, return of bedtime routines, and for many kids, that also includes a school physical exam. Don't worry, Dr. Goodprice has you covered on that last one. Open until 7 p.m. on weekdays and 3 p.m. on Saturdays, you won't need to take time off from work. And the average wait time at Dr. Goodprice is only about 30 minutes, even with every appointment being a walk-in. Oh, and did we mention that school physicals are just $30? Medical care for your kids is important, but it shouldn't be at the cost of your time and money. Dr. Goodprice believes everyone, especially kids, should be able to get affordable medical care on their time. Visit drgoodprice.com today for more information and services. Oye, pero primos, you saw our 300th episode, so you know we handle hot sauce a little better than we thought. And when the flavors are as robust as Babaro Mojo, we are definitely on board. Babaro Mojo was founded by a father and son on Nochebuena. I mean, you can't get any more Cuban than that, right? When they took their traditional mojo marinade up a notch with some spicy heat. They've got four great flavors, like El Habanero and the award-winning Jalabao. But our fave is definitely El Piñazo, which combines pineapple with habaneros and Fresno peppers for a sweet and spicy experience. And if that's not enough, Pero Primos, visit babaromojo.com today and use code Pero25 for 25% off your order. Now that's the kind of thing we consider hot. <laughs> Así que don't wait. Visit babaromojo.com today and use code Pero25 for 25% off your order of sweet, spicy, and irresistible Cuban hot sauces. Que babaro! Well, babaromojo, that is. So, okay, so okay, sad. let's move on to our Barbarazo of the All right, of the so as, as y'all know, we are in a partnership with Barbaro Mojo, and of course, that means that we are now going to award our Barbaro de la Semana. So, do you want to go first, or do you want me to go first? You could go first. All right, so I'm going to give my kudos, my Barbaro, to somebody who... Not in a million years, I don't think, would have ever envisioned that he'd become the American treasure that he has become in the last <laughs> 17 days. Is it John Tesh? <laughs> no. Close, oh, I, close. I know who. Snoop Dogg. Oh, yeah. He's, he was the MVP of the Olympics. They should come up with a special gold medal. For Snoop Dogg. Just for him. I think that the Snoop Dogg of it all during the Olympics, I think nobody planned it. At all. I think you they were just like, can't. let's put him in a few spaces. Let's see how let's it see goes. what happens. Right. Okay, let's give him more right. and more until it became... Did you see him in like the tennis matches and the table tennis? No. Oh my God, it was incredible. He's like, and she hits it to her and she hits it back and boom, boom, boom and bam, bam, bam. And look at her and look at him. Like he was sort of like rhyming to the... To the <laughs> He was dropping beats. It was like, dropping. It was incredible, like incredible. It was absolute. Again, when you think back, you know, when you're our age, you think back to Snoop Dogg's beginnings, the hard, hard LA, you and know, to kid. where we're at now, right? Where he's literally like sharing macarons with Martha Stewart and Cookie Monster. Yep. I mean, who I saw mean, that coming? Snoop Dogg didn't see that coming. <laughs> but then the beauty of it is the capper, because the Olympics are coming back to LA. You have him perform at the kickoff with yeah. Dr. Dre. Yeah. Like, it was just a perfect little full circle moment of Snoop and the Olympics, right? Yeah. And you know what? NBC, bring him back for 28. Yeah, they definitely you should. You have to. They definitely but should. It's going to be tricky, I will say. Because you don't want to also make a caricature out of it and, and overexpose it either. Use him like you did this year. Yeah. Just, just sprinkle it in. Let him yeah. be Snoop. He's in LA. It's his hometown. You know, but don't overdo it. And I think that the the the, the reflex is going to be to like let's put more of him, let's make him like the mascot. And also, almost, but- also what what I think made it sort of cool was that because he was an American in like French France, foreign, yeah. you know, it was a little bit, you know, like what's going on here, right. you know? stranger in a strange land, yeah, yeah. right? But it all, but it also didn't make him a fool either because you right. could also. It was just very well done. And as I said, I, I think it was because it was very organic. There you go. I don't think that that was... They knew they were going to give him a space and they were probably like, okay, let's see where this goes. Let's let Snoop Dogg be Snoop and see what happens. And see what happens. It could either be great or not right. be great. And it was. It was Absolutely. I mean, it was wonderful. Yep. Like, so Snoop, I don't know if you're going to get a special gold medal, but we are awarding you or I'm awarding you a Babaro de la Semana. And, you know, I believe Snoop likes hot sauce. So that might work out even yeah. better. So, you yeah, know, that's great. Yeah. Well, here you go, Snoop Dogg. So, I'm actually giving my la, my Barbaro de la Semana 
for an Olympic related event too, but it's a little bit different. It's Snoop Dogg brought all the glory. <laughs> this was not. I'm actually giving it to Rachel Gunn. Do you know who Rachel Gunn is? I know that name. So Rachel Gunn is the now viral moment that is everywhere, who is the break dancer oh, from Australia. Okay. Yes, yes. And the reason I'm giving it to her is because, you know, when the whole thing with the break dancing in the Olympics. So break dancing, this was the first year that they had break dancing and also the last year. <laughs> the reason they took it off was not because of her. In fact, they had already, I think the IOC had already decided not to bring it back because you, the IOC does this all the time. They'll bring in a sport for like a second. And if it do, if it's not a fire starter, like it, it, it doesn't catch momentum, okay. then it doesn't come back. And, you know, they thought breaking wood... I didn't think it was going to. They wanted to bring in a, a younger audience, you know, a different audience into the Olympics. I, I don't think it was going to. No. Um, because that that is something that's very culture driven. Yeah. And that's something that you can't sort of like, okay, we're going to have breaking now and boom, you know, everybody's going to be into it. Um, I also think that this, you can make the argument that the judging is subjective in the same way that it's subjective for gymnastics mm. but but yes and no because gymnastics you're you have different points that you have to hit right and different different difficulty levels which you could say it's the same for breaking but i feel that breaking because it's such a much newer um sport mm -hmm. especially to the olympics i don't think the protocols and the standards right. are probably the same but anyway uh, back to rachel gunn rachel gunn as we said is as i said is a girl from australia that she's gone viral now because of her wacky breaking that like people are making fun of now and all that when i first saw it i was like yeah it's sort of funny i saw the memes that we were people were making and eh, it was kind of funny but obviously now it's gotten to like levels where she's being bullied she's being really? harassed she's having people threaten her and all this stuff and it's just you know that's not funny like that's not funny this girl went she was she was supposed to have a you know the greatest moment you can have as an athlete or in this case a dancer um and you know she represented her country her country sent her there right right it's not like she barged her way into the olympics <laughs> her country <laughs> sent her there you know maybe she wasn't the best maybe she didn't re you know represent breaking like it should have been done but i also doesn't think that warrant her bullying right, and all right, that right. so you know rachel here's a barbaro for you you're my barbara of the semana so you know yeah and and you know what i think snoop would totally share some barbaro moho with yeah. her yeah snoops can be like let's go hang out rachel yeah and then, <laughs> then spring cookie monster too yeah cool yeah. cookie monster makes everything better yeah i mean that is someone you, you know you Actually, you know, it'd be sort of awesome if they have like as a special correspondent in the LA Games, Miss Piggy. <gasps> Can you imagine Miss Piggy being a special correspondent for synchronized swimming? Okay, why do you get me excited about things that are probably not? Can you imagine happen? Her, her little getup of syn synchronized swimming, always with gloves? <laughs> yeah. Oh, I'm so excited about something that's not going to happen. I'm and her so making sad. some like, oh, Kermit, you know, you're in the water. You can do this so much easier. Or I can see her just being like, well, you know, I don't swim because I don't mess my hair. Right. Yeah. yeah. NBC, if you're listening. It's gold. Yeah. And, you know, there could be some cameos by other Muppets. Right, right, right. But it's the Miss, Miss Piggy. Piggy. Yeah, Miss Piggy. Special correspondent for the Olympics. Can we just have her and like Martha Stewart do gymnastics? No, but, but as I've told you, we've discussed it several times. When Miss Piggy is like on a it's show, Miss, it's Miss Piggy. It's Miss Piggy. It's like, Miss Piggy. Th that is not, that is no, Miss no, no. Piggy. It's Miss Piggy. It's Cookie Monster. It's Kermit. I so, yeah. so I would have her reporting from the Olympics as a special correspondent, like any other special correspondent. Oh, yeah. I would not give her funnier pieces. I would give her even some culture pieces. Like, today, just talk about, <laughs> you know. <laughs> Architecture in LA. Right. <laughs> you know, look at these beautiful arches of the LA Coliseum. She could take us on a tour of the studios. No, she could take us on a tour of the LA Coliseum. Did you know the LA Coliseum was built after the Roman Coliseum this model? Would be great. Yep. If they played it straight. Yep. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Like, no joke here. That's Miss Piggy talking to you about culture. She's got credentials. Yeah. She's been around. She for has a, while. a lanyard. <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> 
she had to go through security like yes. everybody else. <laughs> Just like everybody else. They checked her bag. <laughs> NBC, if somebody from NBC is listening to us, please make this happen. If this wasn't on NBC, it would be it, it would I guarantee it would happen. Why? Because if because um Muppets is Muppets ABC. Is ABC, it's Disney. Disney. Mm. I mean it could still happen. But <laughs> what I'm saying is like if this was on ABC, it would happen. Like yeah. in a heartbeat. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Damn it. Damn it. Anyway. Well everybody. <laughs> well, can dream. Note. We hope you listened, laughed, and learned. And as always, remember to grab your cafecito. No, your croqueta your croqueta. I'm thinking of as piggy. Croqueta <laughs> your pastelito and your cafecito. And thank you so much for joining us, everybody. Have a great weekend. We didn't say bye bye. Pero Let Me Tell You is co-hosted by Darian Borges and Ismaeliano, produced by Ismaeliano, and our theme, Pero Let Me Tell You Freestyle, is composed by Michael Angelo Lomlaplex, the official gay guy. And don't forget to subscribe and leave us a review on iTunes. <laughs>